picture in 1984. Louis Farrakhan, Nation of Islam, making headlines across the country because of something he said controversial about the Jewish religion. Guess who sits down and gets a one-on-one -on -one interview with him? Me. Louis Farrakhan is anti-Semitic. And we have to deal with that issue. And it's a very crucial and critical issue that was confirmed in last night's speech. To use Judaism as a foil, as he did last night, is reprehensible. Anti-Semitism is probably the most common charge associated with Minister Louis Farrakhan. In communities throughout this country, Americans have discussed his views of black Jewish relationships, both past and present. But to Louis Farrakhan, it is a personal indictment, a charge he says has been taken out of context, a charge he says that has been designed to discredit him. To my Jewish listeners tonight, your synagogues are safe with every one of us. We honor a synagogue. None of us will paint a swastika on your house because any house where God's name is remembered, we are to honor and respect that house. And we respect those who worship in that house. We disagree with the practice of Israel. That is our right. If you show me where Israel's practice is righteousness, then I'll change my mind. But I don't think you can. Now, listen to what I have said. You dirty religion by the way you practice religion. Christianity has been made dirty. Not because Jesus was unclean, but when you use religion for imperialistic design to go into people's lands and give them a Bible and the Lord Jesus Christ and then rob them of themselves and their wealth and their dignity in the name of Jesus Christ. You are practicing a dirty religion. Minister Farrakhan, you have consistently denied being anti-Semitic, but the media has consistently portrayed you as being anti-Semitic. Why is that? It is because Jews are very sensitive as we are. And if someone is critical of Jews or critical of some aspect of what they do, the first thing that is used as a defense mechanism is that the person is anti-Semitic. So in my judgment, the Holocaust is used to create sympathy and the term anti-Semitic is used to stifle criticism. I am critical of certain aspects of Jewish behavior. I make no bones about that. But that does not mean that I hate Jews because I criticize them. Jesus criticized them, but he didn't hate them. The prophets criticized their behavior. It didn't mean that they hated them. But criticism comes to all of us to correct our behavior and put us on a path that will make us more successful. My criticism of Jewish control, of black politicians, black organizations, black business, black thought, is a valid criticism. And I intend, by the power of Allah, to break up Jewish control over black people, period. We are not to be controlled by any other group of people. Otherwise, freedom is a mockery. How come you can talk a, about Italians or Irish people or Polish people or Greek people when they offend us and nobody calls us anti-Greek, anti-Italian, anti-Irish? So if we criticize certain aspects of what Jews are doing, then just say he's critical of certain aspects of Jews, but don't say he hates all Jewish people. That's a lie. There is not one shred of evidence that Louis Farrakhan or those with me have done anything against Jews. 
we have just criticized their desire, some of them, who desire to control and manipulate black organizations, black politicians, and to manipulate the process of the United States government. We don't approve of that. I will continue to speak out on that. And as time goes on, when they understand that this technique of calling me an anti-Semite, a bigot, a hater, a violent man is not going to work. It's not hurting me with my people. As you could see, tonight the auditorium was packed with 5,000, nearly 6,000 people. 5,200 of them were black in Pittsburgh. Why, this is equal to the nearly 40 or 50,000 that came out at Madison Square Garden. So what is it saying? All the propaganda efforts that have been made by the press have not stopped these young people who put on this program tonight from bringing me here, and it certainly didn't stop black folk from coming up to hear what we have to say. And if you poll the whites and the blacks that were there tonight, 90% of them would say, I enjoyed myself. He's not at all what they have painted him to be. So what this does is discredit the media more in the eyes of the American public. There is a perception that you are a very violent man. Yet when I look into your background, I can't find a violent act that you have ever committed. Why does that perception continue? Well, when they create the image of a black person being a violent person and create the hysteria around me where young Jews and others can come out and stand on a street corner on Pitt University campus and call for my death. And the press doesn't see these lily white, nice young Jewish boys and girls as being violent. They're just upset with that bigot. But that can be excused because that's white folks in their traditional pattern of calling for the death of another black leader. But this time, you won't be able to put that small time stuff over on me or on us. I will be alive and well. You know, America does not have the power to put me to death unless it pleases God. And if it pleases God, it pleases me. Notice that tonight, every report that came on television said how well ordered and mannerly the people were. At the forum in Los Angeles, 19,000 people stood in line and waited for hours to get in. They were orderly, mannerable, no incident. At the garden, they say 25,000, but there were between 40 and 50,000 people gathered around that garden trying to get in. Orderly, mannerable, not one incident, but I'm a violent man. And yet nobody leaves from the auditorium where I speak to commit one violent act against any white person, any Jewish person, any Jewish merchant. They go out into the night with the thoughts of what they heard on their mind to construct or reconstruct their own lives to make themselves better people. But of course, I'm a violent man. And this is because they want to prepare a violent death for me. Should Farrakhan live? No! Should he be in the United States? No! no. He belongs where? Libya! Mordecai Levy, leader of New York City's Jewish Defense Organization, arrived in Pittsburgh the day before Minister Farrakhan's scheduled appearance. Although he seemingly attracted limited support, his street corner demonstration exemplified the anger and fear often associated with appearances by Louis Farrakhan. Mr. Farrakhan, why do you think people are so afraid of you? Truth. 
makes those who are guilty of having deceived the people feel uneasy because they know the truth uncovers a lie and destroys it. Again, there are those who have always feared that someone would come along that black folk would really listen to, that they didn't control, and that would mean possibly the unification of the masses of black people, and this some fear as a sign of the end of their power and authority over our lives. Louis Farrakhan is obviously a lot older now, but I gotta tell you, when we met him that night, everybody was talking about Louis Farrakhan and was afraid of him. More from the interview coming up. Don't go away. <laughs> 